two things. You've seen two clips of my deadlifts today. I'm only gonna show those two. Reoccurring theme, bracing. Rib cage above hips. Do not hyperextend your thoracic spine while trying to deadlift. That's why I focus so much on bracing and the second thing I was gonna talk about is why I am not using a belt. I have nothing against the weight belt. I do not think it is useless. I think it's an extremely useful, it is an extremely useful tool. It is a tool. It is not a safety tool, okay? It is it's not meant to keep you safer. It's meant to increase intra-abdominal pressure because when you're bracing against the surface, you will brace harder. If you're bracing incorrectly against the surface, you are just as likely, if not more likely, to get yourself hurt because you think it's keeping you safe. Hence why a lot of people I know that brace incorrectly get hurt while using a weightlifting belt. The reason I don't use a belt is because I am not purely a powerlifter. I am an athlete working out in the gym to get stronger. Yes, could I potentially move more volume with increased intra-abdominal pressure from using a weight belt? Definitely. Do I want to increase my skill of bracing without a belt and not depending upon a belt? Yes, I do. Hence why a substantial majority, if not all of my training at this point in time is done without a weight belt. When I do want to be a competitive elite powerlifter, I will implement more belted training then. But I should still be able to achieve optimal progression without a weightlifting belt. Now, I don't think belts are useless, but if you're not bracing in a good fashion, okay, and I'll explain the way I brace real quick, I exhale all of my air out, I flex my abdominal, I flex my abs, I take a deep breath into my, my diaphragm while keeping my abs braced or flexed, and then I do what I need to do, whether it be squat, whether it be deadlift, that's why you know this, I have a sharp exhalation, and then a brace, so I flex, and then an inhalation to my diaphragm, and then I do whatever I need to do, because that's how I achieve my best way of bracing. Some individuals like to flex their abs, or they like to extend their belly, so extend their diaphragm, and then flex their abs. I find that if you extend your belly without bracing and then you flex your abs, you're still going to have a slightly extended, or yeah, slightly hyperextended thoracic spine. But if you get yourself into position, exhale all the air out, get yourself so that your rib cage is above your hips, and then you brace. I find that that works best for me. Attempt it, it may work best for you, but I want you to do your research. I don't want you to only listen to me and do what I say. Um, but I'm just giving you the reason why I haven't utilized my belt, because I have a lever belt, I just choose not to use it at this point in time. Personal choice doesn't mean you need to stop using yours. Just something I want you to understand. Learn to brace first, make sure you're bracing correctly, then use your belt to amplify that technique. Let's go on. So nothing special in this. I'm just letting you know that I am redoing my first week of training uh, because of my food poisoning bout. So I didn't eat much on those days, I felt really bad. And I don't think it would be smart if I try and progress this week from a week of pretty much not working out. So I'm gonna start at the beginning of my program again. I'm going to shorten up some movements today because I'm running out of time. So I won't be doing dumbbell seal rolls, I'll just be doing dumbbell one arm rows. Um, and yeah.
What's up guys, so I just finished working out. I am heading home. Now, I had Brazilian Jiu Jitsu today, earlier on today, and then I worked out. And I, I would say that I believe if everything were up to where it should be, for example, if, if I drink enough water today and um, if I ate enough food so far today, I think I would have had better performance levels in the gym. But either way, I'm, I'm really excited about how BJJ is going. I really enjoy it. And it, I, I believe that I can get away with doing it three times a week along with working out and I can still make progress. Now, number two, I want to thank all of you guys who commented on my Let's Talk Question 1 video. I am going to continue pumping out questions for you guys uh, because I think that uh, as a cumulative, if we can all you know, think about these big questions, even if we have individual answers that work for each, for ourselves, if someone comes to those comments, watches that video, and reads all the things you guys have written down, all of that is going to help someone figure out what works for them. A lot of you guys have intrinsic motivation, a lot of you guys have external motivation. If you don't even know what video I'm talking about right now, I'm gonna go ahead and link it up right here. All right, it was the video I made two days ago or yesterday, depending on when I post this. But, um, and if, if you haven't guys, if you haven't looked at the comments, go ahead and check it out. Um, you guys will be pleasantly surprised about what a lot of you have to say. And I mean, I learned a lot from all of you guys about where you get your motivation. Uh, there was one that was really cool. One of you said that you get your motivation from the fear of death or the fear of losing time. And I, I kind of like that. I, I, I do like that. So. I want to say wholeheartedly thank you. Thank you for answering that question. And when I do have more and more questions, I hope that you guys will continue to be as interactive as you are now and continue answering those questions. But, um, I'm, like I said before, I'm redoing this whole week because I was food poisoned last week, so I'm redoing the beginning week of my program. I am switching out my snatch grip deadlifts for sumo deadlifts because I miss sumo so much. And I PR'd this weekend, so I'm still happy about that. So I'm gonna progress my deadlifts once again. And that's pretty much it. I hope that uh, I said some things in this video that potentially helped you out. Um, I once again want to thank you guys for how cool all of you are. I've, I've, you guys are a really cool audience, a really good audience, and I'm happy that I'm able to talk to a lot of individuals that find something useful from what a guy like me has to say. Anyway, this is Encima the Centaur Eyang from Break the Bar, and I will talk to all of you very soon.